We're in chapter one. What is biological psychology? In psychology, we study the behavior, and biopsych biopsychology. Specifically, we use human or animal, a lot of animals, and we systemically study the behavior with the biological knowledge. So eventually, we still want to uh, explain the behavior. And the goal, we use a lot of animals in the biological psychology. A lot of them are rodents and sometimes primates. And like this, this task, uh, this, this is used to identify the new anxiolytic medicine. And because if you put the rodents here, uh, they're curious animals, so they will, they will always explode the open arm. But they also uh, don't feel comfortable being exposed. So their nature wants them to go to the height here. And they can put here for 10 minutes and measure the time they stay in the open arm and in the protect arm. And they know, okay, what's the best line? Say they will spend five minutes here, five minutes here. And uh, if the animal is, is super anxious, so you will spend more time here, like eight minutes, two minutes here. And then they give you the, the anxiolytic medicine. And it turned out, okay, after they receive the medicine, if they spend eight minutes here, two minutes here, they know it's effective. So this is just one task uh, I explained in the in the use animal. So so psychologists, they use animal. And this is, they call it forced swimming test. They use is to identify the any possible uh, new antidepressant uh, drug. And because if you put the mice into the, they call the forced swimming test, they, they will keep struggling and eventually they, they give up because they know no matter how hard they try, they won't be able to get out. And they will stay float, they won't die, they will stay float. And they can measure the time, how, how many times they stay float compared with their struggling. And if they are uh, more depressed, they will give up easier. Right? They can spend uh, nine minutes in those 10 minutes stay stay float. And if they give them antidepressant, and it turn out, okay, they start to fight for their life. And they spend seven minutes in struggling, three minutes in floating. And it tell it tell you this medicine work. So this is another task. And this is you know, this is pretty obvious. This is the maze. And they use it to identify any new possible smart medicine and the medicine to treat uh, dimension and Alzheimer's disease. So in psychology study, they use a lot of animals. And what they care? The brain. So we're going to spend the chapter three, we spent a lot of time talk about this part. So the, the cell in the brain is called a neuron. And they have a very unique structure. Uh, they have the exon and the dendrite. And they're able to form the neural network. So far, we believe your memory, your emotion, uh, you are you. They're all stored in the neural network. And the network is not fixed. They're always able to disconnect and reconnect. And that's why sometimes you lose your memory. So uh, the, the psychologist's goal is to explain the behavior. And we use a lot of, not, not new from the, the old psychology, they start to use animal to do experiment. Like this is pretty famous, Pavlovian experiment. Everybody know this. Uh, do you know Pavlovian actually received Nobel Prize? Not because of this experiment. Uh, he received Nobel Prize. Yeah, everybody know this experiment. But not too many people know he received Nobel Prize uh, because of his study in uh, the digestive system. He's a medical doctor studied the digestive system. And this is actually his dog. And what he found is every time, okay, he want to bring the food to his dog, he will ring the bell. And after a while, he ring the bell. And he found, well, the dog produced saliva. And what's going on? Because the, the dog associates the neutral stimulus with reward. So the, this is called the uh, classical conditioning. It's a pretty, pretty famous experiment. And eventually Pavlov, Pavlovian go to the, uh, the learning and memory field, become a, a big, big master in that field. Uh, not because of his Nobel Prize research. 
So in the Pavlov's experiment, he talked about all this, right? So you have those uh, conditioned, unconditioned stimulus and conditioned stimulus. So unconditioned stimulus is you don't have to learn it, and conditioned stimulus is learning required. And you have the unconditioned response, like do you saliva is it, and conditioned response is after you learned, and you know how to respond. And in this experiment, it's, it's also producing saliva. So this this is a experiment, uh, pretty famous in learning and, and memory in psychology, and it also belonged to the biological psychology field. They use the animal, and eventually they 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 care about the behavior change. And this is the old example. We also have some new example, like uh, Wang Dominguez. He's a friend of mine. He's a professor at UT psychology department, and he studied the sexual behavior. Uh, he used rat rodent to do experiment, and this is the behavior part. And what's exciting is it's not just behavior. You actually go to the brain. He do the brain size, and identify the different brain area associated with this behavior. It turned out they found some brain area. We're going to talk about some of them in this class, like ventral ventral tegmental area. Uh, some area associated with actually associated with addiction, drug addiction. And they can uh, play a role in the sexual behavior. That's pretty cool. So psychologists, our goal, uh, we study the behavior, and in the bio, especially the biological psychology, you ask them, okay, you do this, would you find something? And most of them, the answer would be, it depends. It depends, because in Biological psychology, you're dealing with different individuals. You always deal with individual difference. There are always individual difference. So it turned out uh, we have to use the methodology called correlation. Correlation. And we'll explain correlation. It's not causation. Causation is you do this and you get that. That's causation. Correlation is they're related. And I will emphasize the difference of these two. So in your test, I will, tell, I will test you what's the difference between the correlation and causation. If you really want to know the causation, you have to do the experiment. Experiment is you manipulate some factors and eventually see if you are able to change the results. So if you treat them differently, we call it independent variable, different treatment, and it turn out we see the results and the behavior change, that's the dependent variable. So for example, this is a pretty famous experiment in the uh, study the, the development. We will talk about this, not just human, we will talk about animal. And they use the, the, the litter of pups. And the rat, okay, every, every two weeks pregnancy, and they'll produce a liter. A liter have 10 to 14. So it's, it's very easy to do the experiment. And those 10 to 14 pups, it take about two months to develop into adult. So it's a very quick uh, cycle. That's why the biological psychologists love to use rodents because they're quick. And we all know, okay, the baby need to stay time, spend time with, with the mom, right? It will help them development. And in a rodent, they can do the experiment. They would, Every day, they have the pup, and they will take, say, they have 14, they will take seven of them out. And seven of them, uh, in the whole day, they will put them into the empty cage with no mom. And at night, okay, when the, the graduate student about to leave, they will put the pups back so they can still have food. So they have the two liters, seven of them, uh, they are that deprived of the time with the mom and the other seven they spend uh, as many times as they want with the mom and after they grow up they watch their behavior change so that's the independent variable they they, they limit the time they spend with the mom and turn out when they turn it out okay they do the the behavior test we just talked about their anxiety test their uh, depression test see if they can find anything in their behavior change and this is the dependent variable so if you want to do that you have to do experiment the causation you have to do the experiment and apparently there's 
unethical to do in humans. So that's why in the biological psychologists, psychology we actually use a lot of animal study. And to test hypothesis, we want to establish the cause and effect. You have to do experiment. And that thing you can manipulate is called the independent variable, like the previous experiment we talked about. Uh, you you limit the time the pups spent with the mom, and this is called independent variable. And the change we call dependent variable, like when you they grow adult, what's the behavior change? That's the dependent variable. And that's the experiment. If you don't want to do experiment, you can do the correlational study. And you should be very familiar with this. In IntroBio, they talk a, uh, about a lot of the correlational study. And this study is, is pretty easy to do in human. That's why in human study, they just give you a questionnaire, and there are 100 questions ask you, especially in the hospital. When you go to the hospital, they'll give you a questionnaire. They'll ask you, OK, your age, uh, how frequently you exercise, uh, what's your income? Sometimes they don't, right? <laughs> and eventually they will corre correlate, okay, how frequently you exercise with your health. And it's a correlational study. So it, correlational study is this decide one or two variables, how they're related. And they will create a number. Every time you need a number uh, for you to identify how correlated these two things are. So this number is between plus 1 to minus 1. So that's the range of this number. And both plus 1 and minus 1 show highly significant. So not just positive, negative also show uh, significant. And if close to 0, that means no significance. And if it's positive, it means positively correlated. If it's negative, it means negatively correlated. So let's look at the data. Every time you look at the data, you see what's in the X, what's in the Y. So in the X, it shows you, okay, the hours of TV watch per week. And the Y, it shows you the number of aggressive X. So apparently this is uh, some study done in middle school, high school. And they study how many hours those kids watch TV. And their uh, aggressive X, they go to the principal's office, how frequently they go. Okay, and each dot means one student. And what they found is when you zoom out, you found there, there's a line here. So this shows you the positive correlation. This tells you, okay, uh, the, the more TV they watch and well, the more aggressive behavior being reported. And the psychologist can start to uh, can make some assumptions, say, well, maybe because they watch some violent TV shows, this will cause this, right? But it's not a causation, it's just correlation. It's just correlation. Or they can find something like this, and you, you can imagine there's a line here. The same two parameter is a negative or correlated. So if you find this kind of data, it's still correlated, highly correlated, it's just negative. It tells you the more TV they watch, they actually less aggressive behavior. And you can come up with your conclusion. You can say, well, because they spend time and watch TV and they feel calm, they won't do aggressive behavior. It depends on how you analyze the data. But this is the data you found. Or this correlation coefficient close to zero, and zero means nothing, not correlated. You can find people, they watch very little TV, and they have more aggressive act. They also can find people watch more TV, and they, they have the same re response. So there's no correlation. And correlational study is, sometimes you will find something um, unexpected. Like in, uh, you will find, okay, people drink coffee, uh, I drink coffee, so it turned out I would, I would look at a lot of study about the coffee. Uh, let's take a short break.